You see, it all starts on the beach. And of course, because I live in Myrtle Beach, where else would it start? Dr. John Avila of Custom Chiro Solutions. Today we're going to go through the information that Medicare doesn't want you to know about ICD-10. The reason why we're going to go at it from this direction and this angle is because it all starts, really does start on the beach. Now, when I say on the beach, what I mean is I'm sitting on the beach one day and a client, or actually a friend at the time, calls me up and he says, Hey John, I'm going through an issue with Blue Cross Blue Shield. I have an issue with reduced documentation levels. Can you help me? I'm like, sure, no problem. So find out where he is and the next, next thing you know we're sitting in his office and it's cold where he was it must have been really really hard for me to get there and next thing I know we're going through his information we actually went through and customized his EHR system to be able to handle exactly what he did in his office and in addition to that been able to make sure he had the information he needed because it was customized to exactly what he was doing in his office see it all started from just this one time we were doing it just one time just sitting there going yeah I could do this and we created all this information for him and then from there it grew into me and a certified coder and a certified hospital bill we started creating more and more different types of systems and Helen Dilling handling more and more types of information and then from there it grew into our team of seven people now with DCs and hospital billers and and, and compliance officers and support staff and all this going on we started helping all these people now we're up to almost 450 customizations totally done across the profession. Now the reason why I go through this is because I've been able to sit back and see where the problem with IC10 is because it's not the codes. You see it has nothing to do with the codes at all. It has everything to do with what people do in their office every day. You see, think about it. Patient comes in, they love what you do, they see exactly what you do every day, and they go, oh, I love it here. So they stay, they pay the referral, and need stuff, right? Now, think about that being the same as, you ready? A swan. You see, people stand by the side of the lake, and they look at the swan, and they go, wow, how graceful. It just floats. But what most people don't understand is that it's not very graceful at all. You see, underneath the surface, just like the way you work beneath the surface, patients don't understand that you have to paddle really, really aggressively to make it all work. Meaning the documentation, the coding, and the training, and all that stuff that goes into it isn't just an adjustment, it's more than that. Same thing with the swans. You have to paddle. and No one knows what it looks like until they actually get rid of the water, look underneath the water, and they see that this swan really, really has to paddle really, really hard in order to look graceful. Same thing here. Now the reason why I say that is because ICD-10 really is more about how do you stay graceful within your office without slowing everything down to handle all this mess about the code changes. Now, that's the question. And that's what I want people to get. And that's what I want people to understand about what we're going to go through. It isn't about the codes. It's about how well you can manage everything and get paid without totally upsetting the entirety of your office. Okay? So, let's start with the first thing. And the first thing, obviously, is what comes down to money. See. It really is about money. It's not about the codes. It's about money. And if you look at what Medicare is doing, what they've said about ICD-10, they've already backed off. Yes, they're going to, of course, they're going to ask you to start submitting the codes on October 1st. But what they've done is they've actually stopped the whole process of looking for doctors to send the information in and have it be 100% correct as of October 1st, 2015. They're going to give you 12 months. Here, you see, let me read to you what CMS is, do, CMS is going to do because we know they're here to help, okay? So let me read this to you. In question two, it says, what happens if I use the wrong ICD-10 code? Will my claim be denied? While diagnosis coding to the correct level of specificity is the goal for all claims, for 12 months after ICD-10 implementation, Medicare review contractors will not deny physician or other practitioner claims billed under the Part B physician fee schedule through their either automated medical review or a complex medical review based solely on the specificity of the ICD-10 diagnosis code as long as, ready, the code is valid and from the right family. So what's going on here is right off the bat they're saying you don't have to be 100% correct and we'll pay you anyway. But the next line is the most important. It says, however, a valid IC10 code will be required on all claims starting October 1st, 2015. 
it is possible a claim could be chosen for review for reasons other than the specificity of the ICD-10 code. You see, that's the important part. It's not the code. They're going to pay you anyway. Why are people out there saying, oh, you're going to go to jail. You're going to go to jail. You're going to go to jail. It's not about going to jail. It's not even about having the right code for the next year. See, Medicare underlined the wrong line. They didn't even tell you what line was most important. The line that's most important is, hey, we're going to pay you, but it doesn't mean you're not going to get audited for other reasons. That's the important part, which means that Medicare really, they're asking you to aim at a target, but they haven't told you what target it is. So they keep moving the targets. It's here, and 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 it's here. The target keeps moving. And because the target keeps moving, no one knows exactly what the issue is. They're like, oh, ICD-10, big deal. No, it's not. It's not a big deal. What it is a big deal, or what is a big deal, is the fact that people are already getting audited for other reasons. They don't have to add ICD-10. Look at this review from uh, November 2014. I have this on my Facebook fan page. If you want to go there on Facebook, it's called Dr. John Avila Helping Chiropractors Do the Right Thing. You go there and you search all the way back to November of last year. What you'll see is the average review, right, that Palmetto GBA did across the country, 79.4% of all the claims they reviewed were denied post-payment. Can you believe that? 79.4%. What do they need ICD-10 for? They already got it. So all the people out there trying to tell you that you need to buy their stuff because the codes are correct and their stuff because you're going to have the right codes, it's all bogus. You don't need to buy their stuff because they're already going to pay you. But they're going to look at other things. And this is what I want to do. I want to show you where those other things actually come in to play. Because what we want you to have is the ability to look right at the target. Imagine how easy darts would be if you didn't have to spend, you know, stand 15, 20 feet away and throw the dart. What if you could walk up to the dartboard and go, I need a triple 20, bing, and I need a, uh, a bullseye, bing, and that's all you do is just put the dart in the dartboard. You don't have to throw it, just put it there. How easy would the game be? The game would be so much easier. That's what I'm talking about. That's, the, that's how simple the game should be for what you're doing. So let me give you a couple things that you need to understand. One is, you need to protect yourself. And protect yourself meaning you have to have the right information within your notes. And that starts with moving the codes over. Okay? So when you move the codes over, you have to be able to protect, take the codes from one set to the next. And this is the first step in protecting yourself because this is what we do for our clients. When I mean protect yourself, what I really mean is over the course of, our, over the course of last year, uh, for our almost 200 clients that we have on a continuing basis, We've only had two Medicare audits within our group, two. And one of them was a CERT, which means it's totally random. So for all the claims that we've dealt with as the compliance officer for almost 200 clinics, we have less than 0.001% of an audit percent, uh, chance with our clients. Why? Because we take them through this process of understanding how to be able to spread out their codes. And this is what the first step you have to deal with when coming down to transition in your practice from ICD-9 to ICD-10, and that is actually converting your codes, okay? So when you convert your codes, yeah, it's pretty easy for someone to sit there and go, oh, well, you know, there's so many codes here, and there's, there's 15,000 ICD-9 codes, and that's a lot to start with, and now it's going to turn into almost 70,000 ICD-10 codes. Oh, my God, oh, my God, and there's even a code for a duck flying into a plane. Please spare me the fake drama. Really? It has nothing to do with all these codes. Why? Because if, if it was, then people would be passing out, and they're not. The only people that are passing out are the ones who are scared or have been sold this fear-based stuff. See, it is not too much information. It's not like drinking out of a fire hose. That's not what this is at all. People want you to believe that, so you freak out, go in the hole, and buy their stuff. I'm not, I don't want you to do that, because you know what? You don't have to buy their stuff. You don't have to buy the conversion. Think about it. Your EHR system has already done the work for you. If you go into Eclipse and Doubt and look in the codes, they're already there. What do you need to buy? What do you need to buy $99 a month for from someone when they, to, to give you the code changes from this code to that code when in your system they're already done? In fact, you could even take your phone, okay, go to the App Store, and then search this. Search 
find a code. Now, if you look at find a code, it says find a code IC10, IC9, plus gems. Gems meaning general equivalent mappings. If you go look into this gems, you'll find this is where, this is where they got their information from. All they did was just take the stuff and put it on a website and say, buy my stuff for $99 a month. It's useless. You don't need to buy that. You can actually download this to your phone right now, and it would be free, and you can do all the conversions yourself for free. What do you need it for? And then your EHR system has all the codes in there now to build. And that's easy. So the interesting point here, and I can just show you real quick how simple gems work and how, how little there is to do in this arena. The first one, if we just go ahead and search a 739.1, okay? So if you look at 739.1, a simple cervical, you know, a segmental dysfunction, you'll go in there and you'll find something called M99.01. Very, very simple, okay? In some cases, and this is the warning, some cases they're good to go. In this case, that's it. And if we look at M99.01, what we'll see is this. You ready? There's no more extra codes. You were sold all this stuff. Oh my God, there's so many codes. There's so many this. They're going to add you know, this, this code for subluxation. We're going to have to level and you have to have this. Not in this code. In fact, this is how simple it is. M99.01 equals, without any extra letters or numbers, 739.1. So what does that mean? Half your codes are done. If you're using subluxation within your diagnosis code set, 739.1 is M99.01. 739.2, M99.02. Just like on the sheet. Just like what you see right here on the screen. It's that simple, which means there's good news. You say, good news in ICD-10? Yes, good news. Good news is this. Half your coding's already done for you. Half your coding's finished. Done. 50% of the work is done for you for conversion. Why buy a product that does a conversion? Doesn't make any sense. Now, some of the codes are a little bit more difficult. If we just take uh, ankylosing hyperostosis as an x-ray finding, right, 721.6, if we look at that code and we, and, we, and we convert it over in gems, it comes out to M48.10. Now, if you look up M48.10, it says that zero is unspecified. And this is where you have to actually take the app and just plug in M48.1, and then what will happen, it will give you all of the the codes. And what I mean is this, you can have all the codes where it gives you uh, M48.0, or point one zero one 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 two one three one four one five six seven one eight one eight and one nine. So if you have all those codes, now that they're listed out for you, you can check and see how specific they have to be. And you can see all the codes listed. Now you can see that an uh, M48.11 is in the cervical or cervical thoracic. So just look at these codes. And one of the things I want to say to you real quick about ICD-10 is that you'll see in here that you'll have NOS, meaning not otherwise specified. If that's the case, okay, you have to make sure that you get a more specific code if available. And in this situation, where we're looking at forced ears or uh, you know this um, this uh, ankylosing hyperostosis. What we're talking about here is that they're giving you different regions. That's why there's more than one code than what it used to be. Okay, so one of the things you'll have now is you'll have a very specific region, which was common in ICD-9. Not sorry, in this code, but in ICD-9 it was. But one of the things that's new is that in ICD-10, you'll actually have one of these codes, meaning multiple areas. So you have to list it more than once. So that's one of the things in, 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 uh, in ICD-10 you have to look at, which is going to change something for you. Ready? It's going to change the way you actually document, which we're now we're starting to get to how this works, because this is the important part. You, you, can, you can use the gems, and that's real simple. And that's one of the easy things to do. But here... This is where it gets really interesting because now you can't just say, I see four steers on the answer report. You actually have to say, I see four steers at a certain level. Why? Because the code is requiring a specific level of documentation. Now, this sounds like a lot of information, and it really is. So you might sit there and go, oh, John, what am I going to do? I can't, I can't take it all. I can't, all the, I can't take it all. And that's cool. But remember, how do you eat an elephant? Always one bite at a time. And that's what I want you to know right now. I'm going to show you how to be able to do this one bite at a time. The first bite is this. If you're going to convert your codes, the first thing you should do is find the shortcut. And this is the shortcut. Here's where you actually make it so easy for yourself. Now, I know if you go back into your, into your billing profile, you'll find that you use codes uh, over and over again, kind of almost like a certain condition has these types of codes, a certain condition has these types of codes, another condition has this type of code. What I want you to do is go back and look at those codes. Go back and check them. And what you'll see in those codes is you will actually find 
codes that you use, like let's say four of them, and I'll give you an example here. Let's say a sample set for neck pain. Here you have 723.1 for cervicalgia, 781.92 for abnormal posture, 719.58 for joint stiffness, and 739.1 for signal dysfunction. So we have those first. No big deal. That, let's say that's our, our typical set of codes we use for, for a neck pain case, okay? And what you should do is go list them, and instead of having this, this process where you have too much information, you're trying to you know, drink from a fire hose, what you should do is just go ahead and convert those four and do everything by subjective set of codes. And if you do it by this co code set, what you'll find is that this game becomes a lot more simple. Okay? Now, if we look at the conversion, a 723.1 would be M54.2, and then uh, 781.92 would actually end up as uh, R29.3 for normal posture. And then we have joint stiffnesses M25.60. And this is one of the times where this unspecified is going to lead us to a little bit of a change. And the reason why I say that is because the codes are going to change October 1st, 2016, one more time. And when they change that time, they're not going to give us these new gems. So these services that you're buying access to really may or may not give you all the information you need that come this time next year. And the reason why I say they're going to change is because in situations like this, we have this joint stiffness code, but what we don't have are any of these codes related to spinal joint stiffness. It's all like extremity stuff, okay? So if you're going to use joint stiffness, this would be the code you would actually use because that's the only one that would be unspecified because none of the codes actually relate to any of the spinal, spinal column or spinal joints, okay? So... N99.01, let's say male dysfunction, somatic cervical dysfunction, no big deal there, we got that complete. So that's exactly how you make this work for yourself. You have to break these into sections, okay? And this is what we've done for our clients, and this is the reason why we go through them, we talk about protecting them, we're able to go ahead and create these specific coding blocks for our clients based on what they tell us they're doing, that way they can spread out their codes. And when we spread out your codes, what ends up happening is you become less profilable, if that's a word, but the chances of you being profiled become reduced because now your codes are more spread out. If you use the same code over and over and over again, what ends up happening is the carrier can predict what you're doing and they can check and see exactly how many times a specific condition should be seen within your office. And if you're an outlier within that, they have so many within one. I'll give you an example. I have a client and her issue with Medicare was that she used the same code over and over again, yet some of the codes, or some of the patients were seen for six visits, some for 18, some for 24, some for you know, 30 visits. Now, that gives you a big spread, okay? And some of the conditions that you're looking at should be pretty tightly knit together, meaning you should use spring strain for maybe four, six, eight visits. If you have a disc problem, maybe six, 12, 18 visits maybe. And if you have like a neurological issue with the disc involved, something like that, maybe 18, 24 visits. But if you use the same code across all different types, the carrier can then come back to you and say, okay, you have a, a certain code that, that should be used by everyone else that we see for six, eight visits, but you have these patients that you're using it for 24, 30 visits. And if that's the case, something's really, really long. I want to look at why you're using this code that everyone uses for six visits that you're using for 18 or 24, and they'll request that documentation. So you have to be careful with the codes you use because they profile them, okay? So we want to make sure, and this is what we do for our clients, we spread them out. That way, their chances of being audited reduce greatly with this process, okay? So that's the reason why what I want you to do is go ahead and create your, your subjective set of diagnosis codes and then lay them out and then convert them over and then look at them and say, okay, how many different types of sets can I have? That way you become less profilable, okay? If that's even the word. Anyway, next, the connection. Yeah, the connection. The reason why I say the connection is because the next piece that Medicare wants you to know is that when it comes down to these codes, it's really about being like a train, okay? What I mean is you have the engine, the cars, and the caboose. And if they're not all connected, the engine leaves, but the caboose stays. We can't have that. We need everything leaving together. And the reason why I say that is because what we need to have is the connection between the complaint all the way to the diagnosis to be able to support ICD-10. Now, once again, before we go any further, we have to make sure we understand is that, yes, Medicare is here to help. One more time, Medicare is here to help. And I find this funny because they're here to help us. So even if you can't get this down before October 1st, even if you can't do this, there is a way out. And that is they'll actually let you get paid in advance before you get your coding correct. Yes. Can you believe this? They'll actually pay you. 
they'll pay you. Now, they're going to want you to build the codes correctly later, and they're going to want you to document it correctly later if you don't get it done right away. So just be careful with this, because if you actually apply to have Medicare pay you because you're not quite sure if your coding is correct, it is, remember, it's not just the codes, it's going to be this connection. And what I mean by connection is this, the new way to prove the codes. Yes, there's a new way to prove the codes. And the new way to prove the codes, as far as I'm concerned, there are three of them, actually three ways to prove the code. And the reason I say three ways to prove the code is because the way it used to be is not the same anymore. The way it is today and the way it's going to be for ICD-10 has changed. We just can't pick codes like we used to when I was a kid at a Chinese restaurant. I wanted one from list A, one from list B, and one from list C. So that means I'll have um, uh, coconut shrimp, uh, I'll have a uh, chop suey and uh, an egg roll with uh, some fried rice. That's, that's, that's how it used to be, okay, with ICD-9. I'll take this code, this code, I'll take a, a spring strain, a subluxation, and a spasm. No, that's not how it is anymore. You see, with ICD-10, it's totally changed. With ICD-10, the new rules are the codes must be exhibited, viewed, and reported. Meaning that, number two, the process of supporting them must be just like this. You must have the exact exam finding within your notes to support each individual diagnosis code. Okay? They must be reported directly. And I'll give you an example. Patient complaint, type of exam, exam finding, specific, and then comes the diagnosis, not patient complaint diagnosis. There has to be something that ties them together. Hence the whole idea behind the, the wording of how, you know, the, the connection of a train, okay? So that's what we have to do. So the reason why I say that is because, number three, the most common way that people fail is by doing it the old way, which is the reason why with ICD-10, it's not about the codes. I'm getting to the big point here. It's about your documentation. So you're not going to be able just to use the same old documentation. You're going to have to upgrade because the codes are more specific, meaning you just can't write positive test. Here's an example of an old orthopedic test that we used to have, okay? And what happens here is the patient uh, has their problem, the doctor circles SLR and Valsalva's. Now, that used to work, but not anymore. See, in today's world, we could just go ahead and say positive, positive, positive disc, positive lumbar disc, done, right? Now, in ICD-10, that's not the case. If you look at the slide here, it'll tell us that the lumbar disc code of M51.2X, we put X in there just to make sure that we had the fifth, fifth character, what we're going to find is now we have to also state not just the lumbar disc, but what level. Not just disc problem, but what level it is. So you're going to have to write more than just positive lumbar disc test. So you're going to have to write in, is it lumbosacral? Is it lumbar? Is it thoracolumbar? So you have to tell me what level it is. So let me give you an example of what I mean. I had a client in Tennessee. She calls me up and she had this big issue with Blue Cross. Blue Cross comes to her and says, okay, you did muscle spasm for a problem in the shoulder. She goes, yes. He goes, great. Now, please show me where you, sh where you showed a positive test for muscle spasm. She goes, right here, it says positive shoulder depressor test, positive for spasm. He goes, great. So let me ask you a question. How many different possible positives are there? She goes, well, there's positive for disc and positive for flexibility and positive for uh, neuritis and positive for spasm. He goes, great. Each one gives us a different outcome, right? She goes, yeah, well, I assume disc would be traction and, uh, you know, neuritis would be ultrasound and, okay, and, and loss of flexibility, maybe activities and exercises. But this patient was positive for spasm. That's why I did muscle spasm. And that's why I did muscle stiff. He goes, okay, great. Hands her back the note and says, could you please tell me where you wrote positive for muscle spasm? She couldn't. He goes, great, that'll be $22,000. That was her audit, 22 grand. Because she couldn't support the use of muscle stim because the whole idea of just writing positive for some type of exam finding wasn't specific enough for him. And if we look at this exam right here, you'll see the doctor writes positive SLR, positive of salvas, which in, real, which in reality means that there wasn't some type of disc problem, but we can't really tell because we need to write down why the test was positive, which means you need to put in your notes right here where it says 
there needs to be some type of description of what made that test positive. That is, ladies and gentlemen, the biggest piece of IC10 no one is talking about. It is not the codes. Think about it. You could even get a squid to pick 11 of 14 World Cup games correctly. How hard is it to pick a code to put on a claim form? You just gotta look right here. Let's see, I have uh, M25.4, M20, M51.5, M51.27. Just pick one correct code and guess what happens? You'll get paid anyway. So it's not about the code. So what is it really about? It's about algebra. You look at me and go, John, algebra. What do you mean algebra? I go, yeah, it's actually really about algebra. You go, how's that real? I said, okay, let's look at this test real quick. Let's think all the way back. Let's go back to high school. Okay? If I asked you for the slope of a given line and put this graphic up, and I said, go ahead and, and tell me what the answer was, and you said, oh, I know it. It's 31. Let me ask a question. If you were in high school and you just wrote up there as a test question and you gave the answer 31, what would happen? Yeah, that's right. You would get zero credit. You may get partial credit, maybe if the teacher was nice to you, but in most cases, you got zero credit. Why? Because you need to show your work. That's the idea behind ICD-10. You just can't pick the codes like we used to in ICD-9. You actually have to show your work. If you don't show your work, you're going to get zero credit. So think about it. They're going to pay you. You can ask to get paid even if you don't know the codes. They're not going to deny you based on the code you use. But when they do come back later, next year, what are they going to ask you for? They're going to ask you to support the code you did use. And if you didn't support the code correctly, they can choose to audit you for any reason. They didn't say they weren't going to audit you because you didn't document it correctly. They just said they weren't going to audit you because of the code you used. They weren't going to deny you. But they will audit you down the road. And if you don't support the code correctly, then you have no reason to go ahead and, guess what? Appeal. That's right. So this isn't about picking the codes. This is all about making sure that your documentation is correct. So here's the step that you need to do to be able to make it all correct. And this is what it's about, okay? So it's not about the codes. It's about making sure the connection is right. Is the connection correct? Here's how you do it. So if you look at the screen right now, you'll see our original ICD-9 codes, which are tied to our ICD-10 codes, which are then tied to an exact exam finding. So this is what you need to do. List out your 9s, convert them over to your 10s, and then write in the exam finding for all of them. Like what exam finding would prove the utilization of that ICD-10 code? That's what you're going to have to do. So you have to go back and pull out, guess what? A SUSE or some type of exam book or something like that. And then when you do that, you're going to have to make sure that you have the exact correct exam finding. That's what you're going to have to have in order to make sure that you've supported the code correctly. Like I said, getting paid isn't a problem. Picking the code. Pretty simple. What's going to be the problem? Supporting the code. And you're not going to be able to do it with today's level of documentation like we just showed. You're going to have to up your game. Okay? So if we look at Eclipse, you'll see on Eclipse here we have a screenshot. If we just look at the Eclipse customization that we've done, you have an area here where you pick out your part. And once you get to the level where you're picking out your part, you'll see on the right-hand side of the screen there, we have our you know, different types of part. And then the next screen will come up with, we can actually pick the levels where we found our part problems, meaning you know, pain, asymmetry, range of motion, tissue tone change. Our customizations actually give you the correct code with all the exam findings and the complaint. That's what I'm talking about as far as how it works. If you look at the screen, you'll see we have like an oxaput here and for an oxaput issue, we have a pain complaint where we have the patient states they have a complaint of discomfort, pain, loss of range of motion, cervical region. Uh, diagnosis is M54.2. Great, no problem. Asymmetry exam shows postural deficit. Diagnosis uh, R29.3. Range of motion, and we know the range of motion at the joint level is going to be very specific to uh, cervical segmental dysfunction M99.01. Tissue palpation of cervical paraspinal musculature reveals spasm bilaterally M62.830. Great, no problem. So we have this range of motion issue here. Range of motion for global upon exam. We have that M25.6. So now we have all of these codes tied specifically to the documentation all within the click of a button. 
instead of you having to put it all together. And, and now, not only does that happen, we made you faster. So think about going back to the whole idea of the swan. Okay? If you're graceful now, and you buy someone's product that says, here's all your codes, and now you've got to go ahead and take that code conversion, go find the exam finding somewhere, write it all up, and then put it into your system, do you think it's going to disrupt the way you take notes? Of course it is. And it's going to slow you down. As compared to, in our process, it would actually make you faster because it's already done. And it isn't because you've customized just yours. See, we've done, but like I said, almost 500 of these customizations. And because we did almost 500 of these customizations, we've seen how to be able to make the process faster. Which leaves us with the biggest question of the day, which is, would you put your baby in a car after your four-year-old did the brake job? And the answer is probably not. And the reason why I ask the question is because you wouldn't want some amateur to go in there and start playing with your macros either, would you? Or, for that matter, yourself. See, no one asks me, hey, John, what does this x-ray look like when I go in their office? You know why? Because I haven't looked at an x-ray in years. I go, uh, looks like a chicken bone. The same way you really should be looking at these codes and be trying to be able to make all the documentation that goes and work with it, works with it, because that's not what you're into. That's not what you're doing. And I'm sure the last thing you want to do in the first place was even get on this webinar. So in reality, what we want to do for you is we want to give you the ability to safely put your kids in your car. That's all we want. We want to help you be able to say, okay, here's my practice, John. Tell me what I need to do to, in order to make the documentation very, very simple. Now, some of you say that. The rest of you go, well, wait a minute. My EHR company is going to help me. Uh, no, not. But yes, they will. Mm, no, not really. They're not? Well, let me ask a question. See, remember the slide we just showed you with all the diagnosis codes and everything else? Yeah. Did they do that for you for ICD-9? No. Correct. They're not going to do it for ICD-10 either. That's the reason why what we call this process the empty box syndrome. See, you get these cool notes and maybe some macros or anything else, but it's just notes. There's actually nothing within these systems that actually tie the notes together like we've created. So what we've done for you is actually made you not have to go back to school to relearn the ortho neuro class that you finally got out of after maybe one or two tries. So what we're talking about here is being able to find a way to be able to give you the information that you need without having to go do it yourself. So what is that called? For you, that's called our hybrid program. And if you'd like more information about how to get onto our hybrid program, I'll explain hybrid in a second, just email us, info at customchirosolutions.com, and what we'll do is we'll give you a free tour. We'll give you a free tour of how we can customize your system to make it as fast, complete, compliant, and in addition, profitable as possible. And you say profitable, I say yes, Profitable. Why? Because our program includes more than just macros. See, our program includes, yes, ICD-10 customizations. We have ICD-9 now also. We also help you create your billing code sets. That way, your billing codes are all together, and we have them so you can spread them out so you can have a lower percentage of denied claims. We also help you do a coding review of your care plans and make sure that your care plans are correct. We also give you access to our program, if you haven't heard of it yet, Compliant Coupons, which means you don't actually have to sell a patient a discount medical plan. So ComplianceCoupons.com if you want to check that out. In addition, we have all the paperwork that would help you up your game and ask all the complete codes, ask all the complete information, get all the complete codes, plus full transition support where we have hours and hours and hours of IC10 training. If you want to geek out in front of the computer, we have all the information you need for that too, meaning if you want to sit there and know about how to be able to create extensions, we've got that. If you want to know, you know what the 30,000 foot view in order to go and implement your system, we've got that too. So we have both different types of documentation and uh, IC10 training for you. Now, you may ask, well, what if I don't have clips? That's totally fine. We help all different types of systems. If you want information, like I said earlier, please let me know. But do me a favor, don't not email me. Now, you may say, well, why not? And I go, well, you might, but you should. And you'll say, well, maybe I might do it tomorrow. Don't wait. Don't not email. Find out how you can get help. If you don't like system, that's fine, but at least you know more about what documentation is required. Don't put it off either. Why don't put it off? See, I call this the law of diminishing intent, or as a friend of mine calls it, the Lodi monster. 
meaning it's going to come back and bite you. And I know monsters are really cute, especially I love the Cookie Monster. And, and there are times the Cookie Monster looks really cool, or we'll call him for today, for lack of a better word, the Lodi Monster. Okay, Lodi Monster will be there. Oh, it's so cute, everything else. Oh, you know what? Same thing with the information. John, this information was so great, everything else. Oh, it's so warm, so fuzzy. I love this stuff. Oh, it's so great, so great, so great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, what happens? You put it off. And when you put it off, that's when the Lodi monster comes back and bites you in the butt. And what I mean by you in the butt is this, you're gonna put it off. We only have a few weeks left until the implementation date for, Octo for October 1st comes in for ICD-10. If you put it off, you will not get it done. You see, don't forget, we've been working on this plan, this transition for our product for 18 months. If you're just picking up this information today, you've gotta to do it for the rest of the summer. You've gotta be ready for October 1st. Now we've been doing this for 18 months. We've been to hours and hours of CPC training for ICD-10. We've been to hours and hours on how to be, we've gone through hours and hours of books on how to be able to document this correctly. So if you're not ready for this now, you're really, really behind. And if you put it off and don't email us, you're gonna be even further behind. And then October 1st going, uh, how do I build this stuff? How do I even document this stuff? Okay, I don't want you to do that. Because really, what I want you to do is I want you to be here. This is where I want you to be. I want you to be on the beach because the last thing I want you to do is be sitting in front of your computer during the middle of football season or during the middle of your, when your kids are you know, in school and they need help and you can't help them during when school starts because you've got to deal with IC10. Don't worry about that stuff. All you got to do is email us. I want you to spend the rest of your summer and have fun. What I do want you to do in addition to that is email me. And all you got to do, once again, email me. Info at customcarsolutions.com and I want to make it easier for you. Okay? If you email me, what we will do is we will give you, and, you, and if you want our product, we'll give you a thousand dollar credit towards our program, just from emailing us from this webinar today. Okay, all you got to do is email us info at customcarsolutions.com, and we'll give you a thousand dollar discount. Offers good until September first, twenty fifteen. All you do is email us, and we will help you with getting this whole entire process done. Like I said earlier, if you want to eat this entire elephant, the best way to do it is one bite at a time. We've already done it. All we got to do is teach you exactly how to be able to handle it. All right. So thanks a lot for spending your time with me. I really do appreciate it. Once again, this is Dr. John Avila of Custom Car Solutions, and we'll talk to you soon. Take care.